So Games Workshop recently showed off their brand new Sanguinary Guard, but in this video I decided to kitbash my own, and I think, in my opinion at least, they look a little bit better than the Games Workshop ones. So the new Sanguinary Guard have been pretty divisive, and in fact pretty much the whole Blood Angels refresh has been pretty divisive as well. Some people like them, some people don't, and I personally am just a bit meh on the new one, so I figured I wanted to make my own Sanguinary Guard. I've always been a big fan of the idea of them, these nice golden angels with their big old wings, wings being one of the key things there, that just look fantastic. So I figured, why not kitbash my own? Now, to do this, I took some of the Stormcast Eternal sets, so the Prosecutors with the wings, and some of the Sanguinary Guard kits that I had left over from when I tried to paint them up when I was much younger and just basically failed in it. The kit bash itself is pretty simple. I literally just took the body of the prosecutor, so it's the ones with the wings that are flying on these giant big old tabards, and I started making some cuts on here. Now, I wasn't really sure which bits I was gonna keep from the Sanguinary Guard set and which bits I was gonna keep from the Prosecutor set because there's a lot there to like from both sets and going too far in one direction would probably ruin the overall aesthetic and not make enough changes. Now, for this kit, I basically cut off the big old shoulder pad. So what I ended up being left with from the Stormcast was the legs, the torso, and obviously the big old tabards. So the Stormcast have these really big shoulder pads, which are kind of fitting for things like Blood Angels and Space Marines and everything else, but the aesthetic is just a little bit off. So I took my little knife and I started cutting away. And it was the same with the head as well. Because there are all these like push fit parts, the Stormcast Eternal head also goes in there. And again, the heads look pretty good for the Stormcast Eternals, but they're just ever so slightly off. So I wanted to chop those off as well. So like I mentioned, I ended up with legs, torso, with the shoulders sliced off, so I've got room to put some arms and some shoulder pads on there from the Sanguinary Guard set, and also chopping away the head. Now, these are the old prosecutors. I was tempted to pick up some of the new ones as well, but the newer Stormcast lean into a more slender, realistic, if that term can be used for this, look for their stuff. And I just figured it wouldn't necessarily work with like Space Marines and everything. Space Marines are big old, chunky proportions. So the older style Stormcast, I think suits this much better. Once I'd chopped away all the different bits, it was then on to kind of figure out what bits of the Sanguinary Guard I wanted on there. So I picked out a couple of things there. So obviously the arm with the bolter attached to it. I also got the sword arm and then choosing a few of the different shoulder pads that were available as well. It's nice that way I can get some of that Blood Angels heldry on there and all of that ornamental bit as well. So you've got all the wings, you've got the Blood Angel symbols on there and it just helps to add some of that. I chose one of the different Sanguinary Guard helmets as well and I stuck that on there and also just a couple of the bits of like ammo pouches and everything. Of course, I put the iconic jetpack on the back and also this like chalice with some of the wings on there. And then it was onto the toughest decision of this build and that was, do I stick with the Stormcast wings or do I go with the Sanguinary Guard wings? Now, you can probably tell because the spoiler is in my hand right now. I chose the Sanguinary Guard ones. And the reason I did that in the end was, although I really like the look of the Stormcast wings, and the new Stormcast wings also look really, really good, they look more organic. They look more flowy than anything else. Whereas I feel like the Sanguinary Guard wings look good, and they also just look ornamental. They don't really look functional or anything like that. And I love that in 40k. There's just so many things from Warhammer and Space Marines in particular, and I guess anything that's part of the Imperium that is just, it's really showy and it's completely pointless and it's just ornamental. And I like that aesthetic. So I chose to go with the Sanguinary Guard ornamental wings. I just think that makes it look great. One thing that I did miss off in this kit bash was nipples. These probably should have had some nipples. And if I go on to make some more, I'll most likely give this one some nipples and some of the future ones some nipples as well, just to see how they look, because yeah, that would make sense. So with all of that assembled, I then added some rocky bits down at the bottom with some cork and was on to the painting stage. Now, anybody who knows me from like any other painting videos I've done in the past knows that I don't really like painting in metallics. So painting with gold was gonna be a bit of a a tricky one for me and I had to figure it out. And I think I've got it down now to a nice easy speed paint type hat. So basically I used the Retributor Armour rattle can from Games Workshop and sprayed it all over. And then once that primer dried, I went back in there with some contrast paint, Gilliam and Flesh, and I sloshed that all over. So then I ended up with this like mid-tone with a lot of darks in there and just helped to add some of that shadow. Once that dried, I went with a dry brush of Auric Armour followed by some Runefang steel as well. And I feel like this really helped to kind of brighten up a lot of those mids that I had on there. So I basically ended up with all the dark shadow from the Gilliman flesh. I had the Retributor base in there as well. I then had that brighter gold that helped to pick out a lot of those details. 
And then with all the top bits in the areas I wanted to be brightest, I used that Rune Fan Steel, and that helped pick out all those silver bits and just add a bit more highlight. Now, obviously, you want to do all of the gold before you go on to anything else because you're using quite big sweeping methods here, obviously using a rattle can and then using a dry brush all over. So if you skip this stage and come back to it later, you'll probably end up with silver and gold all over things like the wings and other details you paint on there. So I did the whole thing first in terms of gold, got the armor to the stage I wanted it at, and then went back in for the other details. Now, the other details were relatively easy to get done. And the first one was those big old white wings and anywhere there was that wing ornamental look. So I went on there with just a nice bright white and I sloshed that all over. I'm using an airbrush paint for this applied with a brush just because it's nice and consistent and it helps me to get some really nice smooth whites on there. It does take a couple of layers and it took two layers for each bit where I wanted the white. But in the end, you get that nice smooth white, unlike some of the thicker, chalkier whites that I've used in the past. Once that was done, for all things like the tabards that are on there and also those big, I guess what will be purity seals one day that are hanging off the back of them, I used some wraith bone for that. And anywhere that I wanted red, so like all the shoulder pads and any of those blood gems, I used some bile red contrast paint. Now, I love this paint because it's more like a layer paint and it's really smooth. It goes on there pretty much over any surface in one coat and it looks great. I think it's one of my favorite of the contrast paints, so it's definitely worthwhile checking out if you like painting red. For any of the weapons where I want some silver, I just used some of that Runefang steel and just kind of painted that in. So like the bolter, for example, part of the sword, and that was pretty much it for all the silver bits. Once I'd done all of that, that was basically all of my base coats done, and it was over onto washes and using different contrast paints. The first one I used was Skeleton Horde, so again, over anywhere I put some of that cloth, so again, those tabards, the big old purity seal, the bit on his shoulder pad as well. I used some Skeleton Horde contrast paint, and I really like this over cloth or whites because it adds this really nice, like, coffee stain effect to it. Now, for the whites, I always like adding shadow with blue on whites, especially if it's gonna be like an angelic type thing. So for this, I used another contrast paint, that was Pilar Glacier, and I just sloshed this over the whites. And I really like this over whites because it just adds this really nice shadow. It's still really cold, and in my opinion, it really matches. You could go with something like a, a null oil over this instead, or a gray. Obviously, it's down to your preference and the look you're going for, but I just feel as though it adds this almost little bit more, I don't know, angelic type look to the model. The final bit of wash that I used on this was just some null oil. So anywhere I wanted to add a little bit more separation between the models. So over the weapons for a start, anywhere I had silvers, I put some null oil over. But if I wanted a little bit more separation between colors, like on the shoulder pad, where I wanted to separate some of that red and add a bit more shadow into it and separate that from the gold, I just added a little bit more pin washing there. Around the face as well, there's some bits there like the, um, I don't know, the mouth grill, around the eyes, for example. Just dropping a little bit of null oil in there just helps to add some more shadow and just bring out some of that detail. And then we were pretty much done with regards to like the washes and the contrast paint. There were a couple of details I needed to go back in there and highlight. So on the wings, for example, once I'd put that Pilar Glacier onto it, they were just a little bit too blue. So it was a case of going back in there with my wet palette and the original white I'd used and just picking out some of those details. So gradually bringing up all the whites on the tips of the wings, for example, same on the shoulder pad and on the sword as well, and just bringing that back up. So it looked more white than it was blue. I had the same thing with the eyes as well, so I went in there and did the eyes white, and then I went back in there with a nice bright green contrast paint. And I did the same with the sword as well. So I painted the sword white, and then went back over there with a contrast paint of green, and I gradually brought that up. And once that was done and I let it dry, I went back in there with a white dry brush and picked out all the edges and stuff like that. And then I attempted to paint in a couple of details into the sword with that original white, painting in like some lightning scratches and some scratches on the sword, which kind of give it a power sword effect. It's not a very good power sword effect and there's much better ones that you can use, but I didn't want to use my airbrush for any of this because I wanted to keep it simple in terms of this tutorial. So I went with my brush but you could do a better job with something like an airbrush or just taking a bit more time with it. With regards to the base, I had a load of this base ready mix from Geek Gaming Scenics and dropped that all over there. Then I rimmed the base black, let it all dry and went back in there with a satin varnish and we were good to go. And I've got to say, I really like this. I just like the overall look of it. It's simple and easy to achieve in terms of both the kit bash and the painting, in my opinion. It didn't take that long to get done. And I've got to say, I'm really undecided as to whether or not I'm going to do some more of these. I probably should. It looks like they're either going to be in squads of three or six as per the New Games Workshop rules. So I will probably do at least two more of them to go with it and then also get Dante painted up finally because he's just been sat in a box forever. 
And now that I feel like I've got the gold nailed down, at least simply and quickly, I think I could get those done relatively quickly. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Do you like this? Would you have gone with the prosecutor wings rather than the sanguinary guard ones? Or what other changes would you make to this model? I think this just about gets the balance right between the Stormcast and the sanguinary guard. Sometimes they veer too far in one direction, but I think this is just about right. So let me know again your thoughts in the comments and have you done something similar? It seems to be something that's been done to death online. And I was just doing this because I think these look better than the ones that Games Workshop just announced. At least in my opinion, and of course I'm biased. So thanks so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed that video. And let me know, are you going to be picking up the new guard? You're not. You can do your own kit bash or have you already got like your own kit bash? So thanks so much for watching. Hopefully I will see you in the next one. Ta-ra for now. Bye.